beautiful day and we are coming your way with another exciting episode of the untold stories as we said this season two is going to be fire and today on the untold stories we have a former Kotoko player he is one of the few local players who broke into the senior national team played for Ghana in 2006 World Cup from Kotoko to get a place in the Black Stars and represent the country at the 2006 World Cup and currently he is one of the coaches for the Kempon Football Academy. So he is one of the few players, local players, that broke or had a spot in the Black Stars from the local side to the Black Stars and with no other than Sheila Ilyasu, he is currently a farmer as well. <laughs> Aside being a coach, he is also into farming. And today we have him on the hot seat on the Onto Stories. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. How has it been now, I mean, being the coach for Kempon Football Academy, how has it been so far with you? Yeah, it's a privilege talking to you. Uh, I think it's an opportunity again to inspire myself going forward. Uh, I think uh, when I first came here, I made it clear to the coaches that uh, I thought like me playing was an uh, easy thing. Mm. So, but when I got into coaching, I realized that it was two different things. Coaching and playing was not the same. Uh, but uh, uh, I made my mind that I have to learn because uh, if you want to be one of the best in the world, that means you have to learn and you have to upgrade myself. So I think maybe this is the beginning and I hope uh, when an opportunity turns up, like the Lances, because currently I'm having Lances Day, mm. uh, I'm sure maybe uh, this year the, the C, the B and Co will come around. So uh, I just started and as I made a clear from the onset, it's not easy uh, playing football and now into coaching. Uh, but uh, we are managing. Mm. Mm. Well, when we say Sheila Ilyasu, I mean, it's a name that rings a bell among Kotoko fans and Ken Faisal fans. And you... You were one of the few players from the local side to the senior national team. Now, you are also into impacting knowledge into young players. And with the work that you are doing so far, do you think that you are training players or you are producing players who can easily walk into the senior national team without having to go international before get, they get the opportunity? Yeah, first of all, I think it's, it's a very huge task for me because uh, this is a wonderful uh, academy. Uh, and the goal is to produce a lot of talents going forward. Uh, I think first of all, uh, I came here to make sure that quite apart from producing maybe stars to Kempon, uh, it's also my, my, you know, my hope that the players that uh, maybe I'll help to produce mm. will one day at least uh, help the country by playing one of the national teams, not only the Blasters. Mm. Yeah, so maybe this is a tax ahead now. Well, I mean, how, how has it been? Because I know you are also into farming. So how has it been combining the two? Yeah, you know, see, initially uh, it was peasant and now I'm into commercial. So it's like something that uh, I have to also try to divide myself because it's not easy. Mm. Because uh, you have to give your best to this particular uh, uh, project. Uh, so therefore, I, I decided to employ a lot of people around trying to, uh, to do the things that... Uh, uh, Sheila was doing, but uh, so far as I'm here, and I have confidence in them, they are doing their best. Because day in day out, I, I used to talk to them, and things, things are on track. Mm. But I mean, how did you conceive the idea? Because, I mean, ordinarily, you hardly see a Ghanaian say, I'm venturing into farming or agriculture. But as a footballer, and I mean, being done with your career and decided to go into farming, how did you conceive that idea? Yeah, frankly speaking, from the onset, it was a very difficult task. Uh, but uh, we should also forget that, you know, I'm from North. Mm. Uh -huh, and as you know, uh, if you go to North, we have a lot of vast lands over there. So I, I had opportunity of speaking to one of the best uh, agriculturalists in Ghana. And he works at SARI, that's Savannah Agriculture Research Institute. Mm. I made my pro proposal to him that this is what I want to do. Because, uh, frankly speaking, during my playing days, I made, I made a lot of money. Not all that lot, but... Uh, uh, there were some, sm yeah, some small dollars in the bank, so I said, <laughs> okay, uh, you know, I'm a family, I have a case, mm. the money cannot be there. You, you have to use the money and make sure that maybe you invest wisely. So uh, that idea brought up, and he said, okay, she like, no problem. Mm. Uh, first of all, I think let's start with rice. Mm. So I started with rice, like uh, 20 acres. Mm. So this year I'm going to uh, 40 acres. 
So 20 for rice and uh, 20 for corn or maize, as we call it. Yeah, so that, I'm sure that's how it all started. So now you are doing rice and corn. Exactly. And it's doing well, I yeah, guess. It's doing well, yeah. Wow. So now you are commercializing it. I'm commercializing it. Wonderful. But you know, um, I, you, you are now like, um, you are a role model to the players that you are coaching. But I mean, during your, your playing days, you catch the attention of some big clubs. I mean, you cut the attention of us now, Black Band, but you decided to join a Russian club. If a youngster who wants to be like Sheila Ilyasu, what kind of thinking go into a decision to make that, um, that life-changing decision to join a particular club? Well, you know, players, as we all know, we have been managed by a certain people called agents. Mm. You know, normally they have a lot of say in every decision that you make. Uh, I remember after the World Cup, uh, I was there when I had, I had a call from my agent that, that uh, Arsenal are interested. So it's, it wasn't only Arsenal, you know, Arsenal, Leon, Blackburn, and European, of course. So we finally decided to choose for Arsenal. <coughs> so I spent like two days, uh, two weeks with Arsenal. Everything was clear, everything was going as planned. Uh, I needed some for them, you know. It's a long story. Mm. Uh, I think the agent, Koroko, uh, confessed, and they didn't know what really transpired. But uh, we, we should also forget that uh, if you are investing, especially in Africa, precisely in Ghana, mm. a, lot, a lot of money is going into football investment. Mm. So I remember the money uh, the Russian club brought. It was not easy. It was, How one, much was, it? Uh, it was one million euro. At that time? At that time. So, you know, a local player going to Europe on that amount. Yeah. So, certain uh, decisions came in. I have to look at where, maybe where I grew, especially in Kimpesa. So, Kuroko. sometimes you have to consider the money first. It's not about the club. Yeah, you know, my agent was willing to, you know, to sell me to Arsenal. Yeah, but uh, I was told the money Arsenal was offering was, was how much? Uh, I was told it was two hundred fifty thousand against one million years. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember that I, uh, I had opportunity. To maybe I spoke with the big hurricane, Koroko and Kinfesa, and you, you have to also understand that because mm. they invested a lot. But uh, she now being a coach now, to me the advice I'll give to the kids is fine. The money is important, but what is important is your development mm. because uh, i remember what my agent would tell me at my age at that time maybe going to arsenal but even if i didn't have opportunity to play at that time maybe arsenal would have loaned me to some one of the best European clubs and but all the same uh, it's, it, it was a tough division by then and uh, so you regret not joining us now to ensure that you had a f smooth development i don't want to use that word regret because i remember when i went to russia it was difficult in six months, but uh, when I passed that six months, I realized it was okay because by then, to Portsmouth and Co, they were coming. And by then, I was having an opportunity to join the Blasters. So uh, at that time, what was important in my mind was where I am because by then I was in Russia. So I put in my mind that no, I have to be playing week in and week out. That's the most important, not to be in Arsenal. You can be in AC Milan and you are not playing, it doesn't make sense. So by then, I was playing week in and week out. And uh, the development was coming, chances were coming, but uh, uh, it, it was unfortunate I get a, a, a life-changing uh, injury. Mm. Yeah, so most of the clubs have to withdraw and, you know, it's, it's, you know as we all know, injury is part of the game yeah. and uh, it was difficult by then, but uh, all the same, I have to th thankful to God for, for the God giving that wonderful career. Mm. And, uh, so, I mean, let's, let's just... Um shift away a little from mm. the academy how would you describe the projects currently being undertaken by uh, nana yao amponsa at Kotoko? because you have been a former player before uh frankly speaking i do watch their games mm. i do monitor you know monitoring from far is different from maybe somebody being inside mm. and i never had opportunity of speaking to him so uh it's all about hearsay. Yeah. So I'm also praying, hoping that. But are you impressed with how uh, things are going? Oh, currently because I'm told uh, Koroko are leading the league, as we all know. This yeah. is what the supporters are. Yeah, are they all, are leading uh -huh. the league. And I'm told he's also trying to build a stadium for Koroko and you know so many things. Yeah. But uh, what I can say is that Koroko is one of the biggest clubs in Ghana. So and if you are a, a head, chief executive or whoever is in there. 
first of all, the interest of the club should come at first. Mm. So I might say, yeah, I'm impressed because uh, dealers, sponsorships are coming in and Koloko are doing well. So I'm impressed. Mm. Mm. Now, I mean, if you, you were to give any adv advice to the current players, of the black stars what would it be because your time that i was just sitting here off record i was saying during your time you guys played so well that now it looks like ghana even doesn't know how to play football meanwhile we've been we've played well before we've had good players before and you look at our current state i mean what would give what, would, what advice will you give to um, young players who are currently in the black stars Hmm. It's not easy. I, tell you, I need to look into the cameras and tell me the right. I have to be honest here. Uh, the big challenge right now in the Blaster is all about leadership. It's about leadership. People do try to convince the two things. The leadership and the captain, they vast, very different. Mm -hmm. I remember in our time, it came to a time that if you come to a camp, you don't even know who is a local, who is a professional. Mm -hmm. You know, the unity was there. You know, you could see the charisma among the leaders. I, I don't know why you are getting me. Yeah. But so uh, you can be a captain, not necessarily be a leader. Yeah, exactly. So in our time, we're having leaders. All the 23 months, they were all captains and they were all leaders. Mm. But uh, uh, you know, I left there almost some years. So currently, maybe we all read what is in the newspaper. Mm. I don't know what is inside, but I feel we'll look into your face and tell you, look, Sheila, you are going to carry the day for us. Mm. Go and play. Mm. Meanwhile, well, he's not the captain. Exactly. Meanwhile, by then I was not a captain. I was even a local player. Mm. I went into the church, uh, Ghana against Czech Republic game. We won. He came to me and said, yeah, you carry the game. By then, nobody knew in the world. Mm. You know, this is what I'm saying. We are, you know, we are lacking those things in the, in the national team. But from where I'm sitting, you could see that from the government, from the ministry, from the, everything is in the in terms of motivation. But you mm. keep on asking yourself, why are we not uh, getting the ultimate? Mm. So to me, as a former player, you know, sitting back and watching things from far mm. uh, to me in order to say to all the 23 months all the 11 players on the field should be the captains mm. now with regards to bring um, our returnees coming back to play in the local league we have had a samoyan joining legon cities along the line and now sule montari and then there are some stories of samuel in Kuma. i mean when you hear these stories um, do you think it's 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 a good good thing for the ghana local league Oh yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a, an exemplary leadership for the young guys who's come. Because if you have opportunity to sh share the field with Sule and Co, that means uh, uh, you get a certain motivational aspect in going for it. So I still, oh, it's not only Sule and Income. You know, I still urge those uh, who are still active. You know, mm. currently we are we are inactive now. So those who are active and uh, they are not playing well in Europe or maybe other places. My advice is they should just come here relaunch their career and the young guys that we're also trying to bring up maybe they also learn a lot and Ghana football will be will be back at the stage again mm, I'll be uh, we'll be wrapping up very soon but I mean you were saying Ghana football will be back and better again uh, uh, for now if I'm if you are to use three words to describe the state of Ghana football how will you describe it hmm. just the US <laughs> <laughs> The attitude is not there. Mm. The zeal to win trophy is not there. So attitude, lack of zealness, and the courage. Mm. That is our problem yes, with the national team. And that is not the players, or it, is it the players or the authorities? It, you see, the players, they are the actors, so they are included. Mm. So everybody is including, excluding me and you. Mm. 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 So this is what it, we are facing. Exactly. And so we need to get the attitude right. We need to have the zeal and exactly. we need to have the be courage. courageous. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Um, now you are a coach, so I can refer to you as Coach Sheila Elias, right? Yeah. I mean, now you are you are full time <laughs> coach. <laughs> no or problem. Or part time coach. Okay, full time. Full time uh, coach. So yeah. Coach Sheila Elias, thank you so much. But I mean, do you have the ambition of one day climbing the ladder to coach for the senior national team? You see, what I believe in life is that uh, whatever you are doing, you need to start from the scratch. Mm. Uh, I have started here. I have uh, the like of Kosi Api and uh, Oti. They are around. We talk to each other day in, day out. Understanding the game and uh, 
if you take things easy gradually, you'll be there. So uh, if you're an ex-player, that means uh, you're hoping that one day you'll be at the bench to put the nation's team. But for, for now, we have to take it easy and let's see what the future has for us. All right. Thank you so much. So that's Shila, Shila Iliasu. Iliasu. And he is a former player, former Ghana international, currently coaching for Kempon Football Academy. And also a farmer. So if you need rice and maize, I mean, he's always available to serve you as many as you want. This is the Untold Stories, and this is where we end today's episode. We'll catch you on the flip side. My name is Betty Yosin.